Hi, and welcome back to the CML Info Series. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be walking through some of the new features found in CML 2.3. Um, CML 2.3 is already starting to quote unquote hit the shelves. Some people have it, some people will be getting it soon. If you tuned into my last video on data migration, uh, you may recall that one of the big changes that we have in CML 2.3 is we move from CentOS 8 as the backing uh, Linux operating system uh, to Ubuntu uh, 2004. While that in and of itself is not a new feature, uh, you'll see in a little bit that it does bring a new feature with it or a, a, an oft requested feature with it. We'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, but back to CML 2.3, this is the uh, login screen for it. Other than the different version number, there's not much that has changed between this and CML 2.2. Uh, when we log in, we see the, the labs that we, we have. Nothing really has changed there. Uh, but when we drill into a lab, we'll notice, or you should notice, that the topology, um, uh, the topology UI has kind of changed. We've switched out the uh, toolkit, excuse me, that we're using for the canvas. So the things where you draw or, or drag and drop your interconnected nodes, uh, we've I'm going to delete this real quick to show you something. Uh, we've changed this out. So the mechanics and the physics still kind of work the same. Uh, where links, you can drag and drop things, links expand and contract, they're labeling uh, on, the, uh, on the nodes except for the uh, unmanaged switches where we don't include the port uh, names there. That part is the same. But the reason we change this uh, layout uh, engine, this toolkit, is this will allow us, we went with an, an open source uh, toolkit, and that will allow us to extend it and enhance it to add things like uh, annotations and drawing shapes uh, on the topology map in future releases. So that's, this sets a, a very nice stage for that. Uh, there are some things that behave a little bit differently in here. So let me add that iOS V node back and I'll show you this. In uh, prior versions of CML2, when you wanted to interconnect a, a node from the, the topology, you would click and hold on that blue icon and drag over to the node you want and, um, and, and make the connection. Things are slightly different in CML2.3. Uh, here you click on the blue icon, the link icon, and you don't have to hold the mouse button down. Instead, all of the nodes that you can link to will turn blue, and then you drag just, just the mouse without the button held down, drag to your target and click, and then that will allow you to complete the link. So you can see that I've now uh, completed that link here to, um, uh, to my iOS V node. Let me delete that again. One of the other new features you'll see on the topology map is the ability to hide nodes. So let's say I didn't want to show this unmanaged switch here. I can double click this node and you can see that it goes kind of uh, translucent. It, 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 it and its links go translucent. And so what we can see here is that once that happens, the node itself remains translucent. So when I, uh, when I no longer click it, the links go away. The node itself no longer uh, is, is solid. The links are no longer seen. Um, and this is great if I have like a lot of in this case it was only three nodes but let's say i had a lot of nodes uh linking back to this unmanaged switch that i'm using for like out of band management uh, and it's kind of creating some spaghetti on my topology map that i want to clean up well i can double click that node uh, and then the links disappear they're still there but i just don't have to see them uh, and the node itself remains this kind of shadow or translucent and if i need to bring it back I can click on it and I'll see the translucent links remain. And then I double click and then it comes back as a non-hidden node. It comes back as just a regular node. So that's a nice way. And I, it's not just for unmanaged switches either. If I didn't want XCONs, I could do the same thing up there, remove those links. Uh, if I wanted to remove this node, so on and so forth. It's not just one node and it's not just one type of node that I can hide. And again, it's just a double click on the nodes I want to hide or unhide in order to achieve that. So that's the topology UI in a nutshell. Let's talk about that feature that we got back uh, or got with CentOS, uh, with, with the uh, CentOS to Ubuntu migration. I've created a lab here, simple lab, which is two interconnected devices. Uh, one device is an iOS V L2 switch, and the other device is the new Catalyst 8000 V router. Uh, the Catalyst 8000V is a node type we're now shipping uh, by default on your RefPlat ISO as of CML23. 
even though it's got Catalyst in the name, this is a router. You can think of this like the modern version of the CSR 1000V. This router runs iOS XE. Now let's take a look at how I've configured the uh, iOS VL2 node here. So I'm going to do a show run on interface Gigabit Ethernet 00. And you can see that I've got this configured for .1Q trunking. Some of you might already be know, uh, already know where I'm going with this. I've also configured two non-default VLANs. I have VLAN uh, 100 and 200 on here. And if I do a show run on the VLAN 100 SVI, you can see that I've got an IP address. Show IP and brief, see the same thing. I've got VLAN 100 is up up and my gigabit ethernet 00 is up up. Now over on the Catalyst 8000V side, if I do a show run on Gigabit Ethernet 1, you see no configuration of note, no IP address, none of that. But what I have done is created a sub-interface of gig a Gigabit Ethernet 1.100 saying that I want to do .1Q trunking. I want to tag this with VLAN 100 and I give it an IP address. Is this going to work? It wasn't working in CentOS 8 in the prior versions of CML uh, 2.x. Let's see what happens if I try to ping over to that switch uh, of the, the dot one address. You can see that it is working. So what happened is when we moved to uh, Ubuntu, we got a ethernet driver in the uh, KVM distribution that allows us to do this. This will work now. So dot one Q sub interfaces will work now with the Catalyst 8000V as we've seen, as well as with the CSR 1000V. If you look at the node definition for the Catalyst 8000V, you'll see that this VMX Net3 driver is the new network driver that we got uh, with by default on that Ubuntu distribution. So we now have that ability to trunk, to do .1Q trunking between iOS XE nodes. So that's that, that kind of uh, meta feature we got with Ubuntu. Another feature that, that I just discovered recently, and I, I think it's more of a convenience feature, uh, but very cool nonetheless, uh, you may remember in prior versions of CML 2.x, if you ever had to restart the, the CML processes, the backend, the controller, the MUX, the, the network fabric, all your labs shut down. Well, the other day I had to do some debugging uh, of CML, and I needed to change the debug level from the default of warning to something a little bit more verbose. And I was like, man, if I, once I do this, I'm going to lose all my lab state. I'm going to have to rebuild that up so I can uh, reproduce the problem. And one of the developers told me, you shouldn't have to in 2.3. In 2.3, when you restart the, the CML services, all the labs should remain running. So I'm like, that's fantastic. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to restart just what I did up here, uh, viral2.target. That'll bring down all of the CML backend processes and then restart them. Uh, and then I'll go back and take a look at my, uh, my CML dashboard here. You remember I did have two labs running. So it says server disconnected. Okay, my user session terminated and that's to be expected. Uh, so let me make sure, okay, everything seems to be running. I get the version again, let me log in. might still be restarting everything. Yep, let's try it now. There we go. And you'll see my two labs are still in fact running. So I have not lost any of the state, but let's see if they're actually running. Yeah, green, we can show green for anything. So I'll click back on the console here, click open console. And you can see not only is it running, it's preserved the last place I left off in the console state. So everything is still functioning the way I expect. And the way this works is when CML starts up, it goes to the libvirt subsystem and it says, give me all of the domains, all of the VMs that are running. And it looks to see if it knows about in its database, if it knows about any of those domains. And if it does, it kind of adopts um, those, uh, those domains and connects them to the labs that they're associated with. And so you don't lose lose any of that, that state. Now, if you reboot the CML server, the actual host, then yes, you're, you're going to lose your labs, obviously. But if you just have to restart the processes because something's not behaving correctly, uh, you won't have to necessarily restart the labs. And that can be a great time saver. And I 
certainly appreciate that feature. And it's one of the things, in addition to these more user-facing features, one of the things that was very nice about the changes that went into 2.3, there was a lot of attention paid to stabilizing the back end, to moving things into more of a database-driven um, uh, persistence so that we can do some of these types of things and have more... Um, have more of a, a of a stable state layer with the CML processes itself. The last feature I want to look at is something that is only going to be available to CML enterprise and education customers. Um, so if you're a CML personal or personal plus user, uh, this isn't going to apply to you. Uh, but for those who are using enterprise or education, this is something that's been asked for a lot and, and really helps in those large multi-user environments. And that is LDAP authentication and authorization support. So now in CML 2.3, if you're enterprise or education, you can choose whether or not to do local-based authentication and authorization like was supported before, or LDAP authentication or authorization. LDAP can be backed by something like an open LDAP server, or in this example, Microsoft Active Directory. So it's just generic LDAP, and you kind of define how you want to interact with that schema. So I've specified my LDAP server here my root DN and the, the search base that I want to use. And then I have this user filter and admin filter. Now, the, the syntax is, is kind of daunting if you're not familiar with how to do LDAP queries or, or that syntax. It, 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 it can be a little unnerving. Um, but what these two filters let you do is decide what users from your LDAP database are authorized to use CML and what users from your LDAP database are authorized to be CML admins. Now, the specific syntax I've cooked up here says I'm going to look at either the SAM account name or the user principal name. And if that is equal to, and that's what these uh, curly brace zero mean, if that's equal to the user that's typed their username, this is the user logging in, uh, and they're a member of this group in Active Directory, then they're going to be allowed as uh, CML users. Same type of thing. If the user logging in is a member of CML admin group in LDAP or Active Directory in this case, then that user is allowed to be an admin. Finally, I'll specify this is Active Directory, so I'm going to use NTLM. I'll specify my uh, uh, distinguished name for the, uh, the administrative user that binds to, to, to validate all of this, binds to um, the uh, LDAP uh, database, uh, then some additional parameters, and then I'm able to do things like log in as Jay Clark using my LDAP credentials. So I'm going to come back to here, log in. Now I'm being not only authenticated to LDAP, I'm also being authorized by my group membership uh, in the LDAP database. Those are the uh, major or, or interesting, I should say, new features of CML 2.3. Um, so I hope you're enjoying uh, or looking forward to, if you don't have it yet, you're looking forward to getting CML 2.3. And if you're already using it, you're enjoying these features. This, uh, what we've done here has set a stage for future releases. We're working very hard on coming up with a clustering solution for CML to provide that horizontal scalability that the enterprise and education customers are going to need. Uh, and having... Uh, uh, Ubuntu there, having the uh, the additional uh, backend work with the database, uh, having the new topology toolkit, all of these things are going to go to making a much more extensible, much more powerful product, and you're going to see a lot more great releases from us in the near future. Thanks.